Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We worship you. We thank you for this awesome day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your, um, your glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Esther, you nailed it at the end. I mean, you nailed it. Everybody nailed it. I'm not saying. But at the end, like when you were speaking, that was the Lord. That was the Lord's, that was the Lord's speaking. He was just speaking. He was, that, was, that was the message. So we're done. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Watch the app. Rewind it. Um, no, I mean, I, uh, I, I took, some, took some notes on what you were saying because it was so good. Oh, and I don't know where they are. Man, I was trying to take notes. Maybe I thought I was taking notes. Um, but the reality of what you were saying is the reality is the reality of what the Lord is speaking. The, the glory of the Lord is already here. Okay, The glory of the Lord is already here. And it is his, it's His glory that fills our hearts. It's His glory that fills our minds. It's His glory that anoints us. It's, it, and, and without a revelation of His love, we're not going to experience the glory. That's really, really what it comes down to. And, you know, we've, we, we've spent a lot of time talking about faith, and a lot of us come from various faith, you know, faith-type backgrounds. Um, but the, the real truth of faith is that faith won't work without love. Right. It won't work. You know, Colossians 1 talks about, how, or Colossians 3 talks about how we have, to have a, we have to set our hearts on things above before we can set our, our brains there, our, our minds there. And sometimes we get that out of alignment when we really want to operate in faith and we just go to like work in our faith. We're going to work our faith. The truth is when your heart gets set on the things above where Christ is and you, and you realize that, man, you are, I mean, just <laughs> the image I got like, just picture yourself falling backwards into like the softest, most comfortable. It, you're hidden in Christ. You're just falling back into that enveloping love of Christ. You're hidden with Christ in God. And that's where you are. And when you realize that's your position with Christ in God, you're comfortable with it. You're com- you, you get a revelation of that identity. and of, You get a revelation of Christ. And we talked about that uh, last week, um, you know, how Mary had that revelation of the identity of Christ, and, and through that revelation, she carried the fragrance of Christ. She carried that fragrance with her. Um, when, you, when you get that revelation of who Christ is and who you are in Him, and you get the revelation of who the Father is, and they're in alignment, faith becomes natural. You're, 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 you're not operating out of, you're not trying to work your faith. Your faith, just, your, your faith is working all by itself. It, it's a natural um, outflow of your identity, and, it, and it's not hard. It's easy. It's, it's, um, you can believe, okay, so you can believe without and not know, okay? So, for example, Magnum and I were playing dice. Dice. Yeah, that sounds bad. My son and I were playing dice. We were playing a, a, a dice game. We were involved rolling dice. And I, I believed that I was going to roll exactly what I needed to roll to win the game. I believed it 100%. It didn't happen. I was surprised. There's a difference between believing something and knowing something. You need to know who Christ is. You need to know who you are in him. Not just, I believe Oh, no, I know. Like, I, <laughs> I know. Like, I know who, and I know through the Word and through the revelation that the Spirit brings from the Word. Not that, well, it was um, maybe a year ago or so, a dear sister, um, she was questioning me about my uh, commitment to, well, how do I say this nicely? Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come to give you life and life abundant. That's a really important scripture to all of us, and, 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 and I, I really hang my hat on that. Um, that's anything that involves stealing, killing, destroying is not from God. It's from the thief. Life and life abundant is from Jesus. 
uh, this, 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 this dear sister had, a, had a, a background that predispositioned her to believe that God can make you sick to teach you a lesson or, you know, that kind of stuff. And she questioned me and she's like, well, what if when you get to heaven, you find out God isn't the way you think he is? Well, I'm sorry, Barb. John 10, 10, the thief only comes. I said, well, either Jesus got it wrong or you got it wrong, because both, you both can't be right, okay? You, you know, I'm sorry, but like if you're telling me that God's stealing, killing, and destroying, we don't have the same God in mind here. You know, you can't, you can't present the Father outside of the Son. They tried to do that, and that's what Jesus rebuked them for in John chapter 5. He said, you guys, are, you, you, the, the word doesn't even abide in you because you're not looking at it through me. And any time somebody, and, 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 and lots of people do this, and it's convenient to blame God, but faith and blame don't work together. They just don't work together. You know, it's convenient to blame God for stuff. Well, I don't know, let's blame God. Well, whose fault is it? You know, the Pharisees were like, or, or the disciples, well, Jesus, who, who sinned, this man or his father? Jesus was like, neither one. Well, let's blame God then. You know, no, let's not. Let's... <laughs> So, oh, you got to blame somebody, you know. Well, we, we're not going to blame God because Jesus made that super clear, okay? So if somebody is over here and they're saying, well, yeah, you know, here's Jesus. Jesus is wonderful, but you know, God works in mysterious ways and look at this over here. And, wait, 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 no. Jesus over here said, I am the exact representation of the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So if someone else is telling you something different, they're disagreeing with Jesus, I'm super clear. <laughs> Jesus was always super clear. If someone tells you Jesus was not the exact representation of the Father, they're disagreeing with Jesus. They're disagreeing with Hebrews 1.3. You make your own mind up. <laughs> Don't believe what I'm saying. You can either believe Jesus, which I'm on Jesus' team. I pick Jesus. Or you can believe the other people say, well, you know, that's not really what God's like. Okay. I've got a scripture passage for you. It starts in John chapter 5. You read that. Um, Mark 7, 13 says that by the traditions of man, you've made God's word no effect. God's word is the most powerful force in the universe. When, it, when you receive it, the way it's, it comes with its own faith, okay? Faith comes by hearing, and it comes by hearing the word of God. God's word comes with faith. It's, it's a, it's a, it, it comes with its own faith. As long as you don't have a block in your head that's going to say, oh, that can't really be what Jesus meant. Or, or that, oh, no, God's, well, Jesus might want that, but does the Father really want it? And you get this, you get this dual, dual natures of God, and they compete in your mind, you know, and you can't, you're in conflict with yourself when you believe that Jesus is one way and the Father that Jesus said he perfectly represented is another way. And the only way you get a picture of the Father that doesn't look exactly like Jesus is if you go outside of Jesus to get that picture. Okay? Because Christ made it super clear. So if, if I side with someone who says, well, what if you think, what if God's different than you think he is? Well, then he has to be different than Jesus thought he was too. Because I just come into agreement with Christ. And that's, that's how I have to keep it. It's simple. You keep it simple here. Keep it simple. And you know what? The gospel is simple. Faith is simple. Faith works through love. Man, for God so loved the world, Jesus came. And then when Jesus came, he said in John 10.10, 10, he made it super clear. He's like, hey, all these things from the thief, uh-uh. They're not from me. They're not from my Father. I've come so you can receive life and life abundant. John 14, Jesus tells um, Philip and, and all of us, he says, hey, if you can no longer say you haven't seen the Father, because if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's how perfect of a representation I have of him. Then in, in John chapter 17, Jesus goes on to say, he says some things that are amazing amazing and, and sometimes we we read the word without really reading the word without reading for understanding and i i just really want to encourage you when you're spending time in the word when you're spending just ask the holy spirit say lord give me give me revelation you know father in the name of jesus i just ask for revelation through your spirit and just 
as you read the word, just let the spirit bring that word to life to you. And it, he does. He brings it to life. Um, in John chapter 17, starting in verse 20, Jesus is talking about all of us. He's, he's, speaking, he's speaking to all of us. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about everybody that's going to believe. And then in verse 22, he says, and we talked about unity last week. So if you, if you haven't watched last week's sermon, please watch it. You can watch it online. You can watch it on our amazing app. Um, please watch it. Verse 22, the glory which you have given me, I have given to them. Now, I know in some of, um, some of our, our, our Bibles, um, the, the editors put in little helpful titles. Like one of your titles might say, future glory. Future glory. And that's why Jesus uses a past tense. No. He says, I've given it to them. Like, this isn't about future glory. <laughs> Again, who am I going to agree with? The guy who put in the title that says future glory? Or Christ who says, I've given them the glory. I've given it to them. I'm going to go with Jesus. Just going, going straight with Jesus. I'm going to say, wow, he's already given the glory. He, give, he has given it. So now the glory has been released. Now, with the glory... When we, when we receive the glory, which Esther was talking about, the glory of the Lord, when we receive the glory, we, we have to receive it from a position of understanding God's love, all right? And in that position of the glory being released, that's when the anointing, we talked, you know, the, the word came and, and Esther mentioned the anointing, you are anointed with the glory. You are anointed with the glory. Now, again, faith comes through hearing and hearing comes from the word of God. A lot of times... Well, quite honestly, this message is not really preached very often, all right? We don't really hear about people talking about being anointed with the glory. The reason why we haven't seen a lot of the manifestation of the glory is because the, this part of the scripture, this part of the word, hasn't been preached in faith. And so, but when it's preached in faith, when you guys receive it in faith, the glory is going to begin to manifest greater and greater and greater in your lives. Because this is the glory that the Lord has already given us. He's already given us the glory. Out of that glory, that in the unity that we have with, with God and with Jesus, his son, when we, when we align our, our vision of the Father with Christ, who is the exact representation, and we can clearly see who, who God is, we can clearly see who God is through the person of Jesus Christ. We can clearly see who God is. And then through Christ, we can see who we are. We have a clear vision. We have a clear, a clear pathway okay, <laughs> then faith becomes natural. The glory begins to manifest. The anointing begins to manifest. The unity begins to manifest in the right way, all right? So we see that the glory has already been released. And in verse 25, Jesus says, in verse 26, he has, he says, I have, I have made you known. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known to them so the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. So this, this, is, this has to be based on a, a solid foundation of understanding that, man, God, not only does he love me, but he is love. He loves me. He's in love with me. He loves me. And the beauty that is in Christ, the the, the the, like if you can, man, you know, we, we talked about this last week, but just, just the, the, uh, the picture of Christ being anointed by Mary in, in Simon the Pharisee's house. And the reason why she's doing that is because, she, and Jesus makes this clear, he, the reason why she's doing that is because she has a revelation of how much he loves her how much her sins are forgiven, how much just how, and she's just anointing the Lord. And, and, and there's other people around the room, you know, you got some of the disciples are like, why is she wasting all that perfume? You know, some of the Pharisees are like, oh, if you only knew what kind of person that was, you wouldn't be letting her touch you. And, and Jesus is just like, he's just, in, he's just there. He's just, he's just Jesus, just the most beautiful thing ever created. <laughs> and and the, 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 the beauty of Christ, the, the, the forgiveness of Christ, the love and the mercy that are in, in Christ, that's the Father, okay? It's not a, a loving, merciful Jesus and a harsh, cold Father. Jesus is the exact representation. 
okay? And when we get into that place of understanding, like, wow, faith becomes natural because we don't have an internal, we don't have an internal conflict in our mind and in our heart. So this is, this is bedrock foundational truth to getting faith to work or, or, or letting, faith, letting faith work. Letting faith work. It is, it's bedrock foundational stuff. So if you have an image of the Father, an image of God that you got outside of Christ, outside of the picture of Jesus, you got you, you, you to look at it in the light of Christ. You know, James chapter 1 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, whom there is no shadow. There is no shadow in the Father. Jesus is the exact radiance with Hebrews 1 3. Scripture says that everything before Christ was a type and a shadow. The Father is the Father of lights, Jesus is the radiance of the Father. There is no type or shadow in the Father, there is no type or shadow in Christ. If I come over here and I say, I'm going to take this, this shadow from, from these scriptures and I'm going to exalt it up here above the light of Christ, that doesn't make any sense. The scripture that's a shadow will make sense in the light of Christ. It will make sense. Everything in the Bible, everything in the Bible makes sense. Don't let anybody tell you that. Every scripture, all scripture is profitable for doctrine and reproof. It all makes sense in the light of Christ. Taking Christ out, you got a book with some good principles in it. Keeping Christ in, wow. You've got the most powerful word, of, you've got the most powerful force in the universe called the word of God. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. He is the living word of God. To think that you can read scripture without putting Christ into it doesn't even make any sense. Jesus is the word, like every word, amen? Jesus is the word of God. He is the word. Now, all right, just wanted to make that clear. Any questions on that? Good. All right, oh, here's something really simple. Okay, there's a difference between knowing something's going to happen, and I talked about, you know, faith is, faith is not just, like real faith is not just believing, faith is knowing, okay? Now, here's something else about knowing. There's a difference between knowing something's going to happen and making something happen, okay? And, and, and look at this from the father's perspective. So when I was a kid, my parents always told me we had this hall closet, it was like a hallway, and there was this, these pull-out drawers, and there was a little hamper there, and if I used them just right, I could make it, turn it into a ladder, and I could climb up and get to the games that were on the top shelf, and they always said, don't do that, you're going to fall. If you, you know, they said, don't do that, you might fall, is what they told me. Well, what do you know? One day I'm up there, I'm reaching... <laughs> And all of a sudden, I, I still can't figure out what happened. I'm on my back, the hamper's on top of me, <laughs> and the drawer's laying on top. Somehow I just flipped, I, get, I became inverted, and I'm like, whoa, what do you know? They were right. <laughs> my, my reaction was like, whoa, I gotta fix this before they know it. Yeah, I said, I made, first I made sure everything was, I was, it was like, oh, you know, it was pretty dramatic. You know, everything's, everything's okay, there's no blood, there's nothing broken, put everything back together, you know. Hopefully they didn't hear that tremendous crash, which they probably did, you know. But I didn't go, I didn't run up to my parents and say, why did you make, that? Why did you make me fall? I didn't go to school and tell my friends, my, my mom and dad love me so much, they told me not to climb up and look in the cupboard because I was going to fall, and then I did, so they made me fall. No, God knows what's going to happen when we choose to do, the, to do things. And in his word, he's really laid out some principles, you know. He's really laid it out and said, hey, if you do this, this, this is going to happen. And sometimes when we do something, I had a, a, f a few years back, I had a young man in here. And he was telling me his, some things that were going on in his life. One, he was awaiting sentencing for a drug violation. Two, he had his girlfriend pregnant. And three, he just got fired from his job. And then he says, I don't know why God's put me through all this. He's really testing my faith. Sometimes it's not always that obvious, though. <laughs> it wasn't obvious to him. He was like, I don't know why God is doing all this to me. He's just really, I don't know, he's just putting me through it. Oh, man, I got a scripture for you. <laughs> you got, I got a whole book of them. Okay, just because God warns you about something doesn't mean he's responsible for the consequences, all right? God knows the beginning from the end. 
God knows the beginning from the end, and he's, you know, he, he, he cares about you, and he's going to give you instruction to avoid sin. And he, he gives you this thing called grace. And the more you become firmly rooted in the foundation of grace in the person of Christ, in, in this, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the more of a revelation that you have of who you are in him, and the more of a revelation that you get of who the Father is in the exact representation of Christ, you come into alignment, okay? So Jesus came to perfectly represent the Father, right? Who are we supposed to perfectly represent? What does that make us look like? Wow. So anytime I give the world a representation of the Father that doesn't look just like Jesus, am I doing the right thing? No, I'm not. So if I preach a message to you that presents God in any other light other than the perfect representation of Christ, I believe I am misrepresenting God. Anytime we go to the world and we say, man, I don't know why God sent that earthquake you know, do you know, this is so insane. After 9-11, there were like prominent, like prominent religious leaders, Christian, Christian leaders in our country that were saying, this was God's judgment on America? That is completely insane. That's like in, insanity. And that's another extreme example, but like you, I'm not going to tell you to Google it up, but I, I did. I Googled it. Oh my God, this is weird. There were prominent names, like people you'd be like, what, he said that? And then you realize that's what they're saying. That's the position of their heart. That's the position of their heart. There are, there are prominent ministers in our country that literally preach messages like, well, God can give you cancer as a gift. Really? I, you think you would be, you'd wish I was making that up, but I'm not. You know? or, or come on up. We're going to pray for healing, and if God wants to heal you today, he will. Well, maybe he's taking an off day. But you know what? No, seriously, you remember how screwed up I used to be, Melissa? Yeah, we laugh about this. I used to believe, this is the truth, I believed that when Jesus said, and I believe this because this is what I was taught and I was stupid and I believed it. That's why I tell you, don't believe it because you hear it from me, believe it because you hear it from the word, okay? And the spirit will bring you confirmation of it. I used to believe that Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing, okay? I was so confused about the woman with the issue of blood because Jesus didn't have a chance to look at who he was healing. And I literally thought when she touched him and he, she got healed, part of the reason why he was like, who touched me? Because he wanted to make sure it was the right day for women with issues of blood to get healed. Okay? Because he only healed who the Father was healing. Right? So if he wasn't healing, and this is a, this is a teaching. I'm not saying, I didn't create this huge, huge stupidity on my own. Um, I had help. I had some traditions of man to really make the word of God no effect in my life. I used to believe that Jesus only healed who the Father was healing, so he would look up into heaven, and I could, I could even give you scriptures at it when I would believe this way, and he would say, oh, Father, are you healing blind people? Oh, yes, he's healing blind people. Okay, I'll heal, you. You're, I'll heal your blind eyes. So the woman with issue of blood tri tricked Jesus, and he got healed without him knowing who she was. So, so I thought Jesus was like concerned, like, uh oh i got to make sure I healed the right person because the Father might not be healing you today. <laughs> that is the equivalency of giving an altar call for healing and saying, well, we'll see if God wants to heal you today. That's not how this works. There is no shifting of shadow in the Father. There is no shifting of shadow in the Father. He, he, he is the Father of lights. There is no variation. Jesus is the exact radiance of the Father. There is no variation. When you, when, you choose the, when you choose to have a shadowy image of the Father, you are not looking at the brightness of the sun, the exact representation of the Father. All right? And when we present a God, a Father, who looks any different than the, than the exact radiance, we're, we're choosing to elevate the shadow above the substance. The shadow can never be above the substance. This is the substance of the podium. The shadow is down here. The, the Father of light shines down. If there's shadows over here, i got to look at the substance to find out where the light is coming from. Okay, It's the exact radiance. There, there is no shifting of shadows. And if I present a shadowy image of God and a bright radiant, radiant image of Christ, I am not representing Christ the way Christ represented him. <laughs> Jesus perfectly represented himself. 
And in the perfect representation of himself, he perfectly represented the Father. I have been chosen by God, and you have been chosen by God. He chose his people in advance to be just like his son. That's what scripture tells us, to be just like his son. If I am going to be just like Jesus, I really have to believe what Jesus said. In that place of really just believing and in, in receiving what Jesus said is the place that, okay, 2 Peter 1, I've been laying this foundation for 30 minutes, so now I can get to my scripture. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter 1, verse 2, I'm going to read out of the NASB, 2 and 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. How? Through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature. This is an amazing passage of Scripture. This is an amazing passage of Scripture. Now, sometimes we just want to stop there because that last part of the verse, it says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. But there's a... Okay. The word... The word for that, the lust there, is the same word that's translated a lot of places as desire. Okay? Corruption is in the world. We escape it. Okay. We have escaped the corruption that is in the world by desire would be another way to say it. So there's corruption in the world. You could say there's corruption in the world by desire, or you could say, by my desire to partake in the divine promises, I'm escaping the corruption that's in the world. There's two ways to read this verse. There's two ways to receive revelation from this verse. They're both going to get to the same point. But if I don't have, like uh, Mark eleven twenty four, Jesus says, whatsoever you desire, like if I don't have a desire to partake in the divine promises, I'm not going to escape the, this corruption. The, the, world is, the world is decaying. The world is corrupting. There's things that are breaking down all around me. I have already, in my spirit, escaped that. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. But that's not the end of my assignment here. My assignment is to bring heaven to earth. My assignment is to release, like John, Jesus talked about in John chapter 17, my assignment is to let the glory of the Lord manifest in my life. My assignment is to be filled with the glory, to be anointed with the glory. If you look at Psalms chapter 8, let's jump into Psalms chapter 8, verse 3. Jesus came to put things back in order. The first Adam screwed it up. The second Adam got it straight. Jesus came to put, he says, when I consider, I'm starting in verse three, your, ha- your, your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you have crowned him with glory and majesty, and you, take him to, and you make him to rule over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet. That is the position that Christ has put us back into. That is our, that is our position right now. Now that is who we are. And we've been, in this, the word crowned here, it, it means encompassed or it enveloped or clothed. You know, so we've been, we've been covered in glory, just like Adam and Eve. They were clothed in glory before they realized they were naked. Okay, you're cl- now, now, if you realize you're in glory, you're going to manifest the glory. Okay, if you realize who you are in Christ, you're going to manifest the glory of God. Colossians 1, or Colossians 3, goes on to say that we are going to, when Christ, who is our life, appears, we will also appear with him in glory. The glory is meant to be with us now. This isn't about, yes, we have a blessed hope in the future, but I carry the hope of glory inside me right now. And if I don't hope for that glory to manifest until I die or until the, until the trumpet blows, it's not going to manifest. 
because I am not, I don't have a desire to participate in this divine promise. But I'm telling you, you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, okay? You do have a desire to participate in these divine promises. And, when, and the faith that's being released right now is coming to life inside of you right now because you're hearing the truth, and the truth is setting you free from holding on to like, well, maybe that's not what God... No, God wants this for you, and he wants it for you today. He wants, his, he wants you to be a partaker in the divine nature right now right now and it comes out of a position of having a true understanding of god and jesus christ our lord because you can't on god without jesus christ that's why he came and so when you get this clear picture and you realize that jesus perfectly represented the father and he, you are here to be conformed to that image of Jesus. So you get to perfectly represent the Father too. The more like Christ you become, the more of a representation of the Father you get to have and you get to show. And he's not scary. He's not mean. He's not, he's not condemning. He's forgiving. He's loving. He's graceful. He's merciful. When we start to walk in that, that identification, and we, we, we realize that, man, if Jesus is going to do it for me, if Jesus wants it for me, it's because the Father wants the exact same thing. We eliminate that inner conflict, that inner place of doubt, where when we pray, we go to Jesus and we're not sure if the Father's going to agree. Okay? No more. No more inner doubt. No more inner fear. No more inner turmoil. You know who you are. You know who Jesus is. And you know who the Father is. And it looks like this. It looks like this. You are, you are coming into alignment in your heart. Your heart is coming into alignment with the Father. And your mind is going to be able to sit, grab, some, grab things that you couldn't grab before. Now, instead of working your faith, I've got to work this up. Man, it flows from the Father. It, it's a perfect gift. Your faith is a perfect gift, and it's coming down from the Father of lights. And it's, and it's, and it's to you in Christ. It's who you are. It's who he is. It's who he is in you. And just like last week we talked about this Zoe, this, this life, it's not a life outside of God. It's a life in Christ. It's God sharing his life with you. And in sharing his life, he's sharing his divine nature with you. When you begin to understand that the, the, the scripture, all the precious promises of the scripture, all the precious promises of the word, all the things that Jesus talked about, all the, all the demonstrations of power that Jesus did, when he said in John 14, 12, you're going to do the same things, the same works, the same miracles, the same signs and wonders I did, in fact, even greater, he wasn't kidding, he was talking about right now, and it comes out of a, who you are, it's who you are, I'm in Christ, of course it's going to happen. Of course, of course it's God's will. Of course I'm supposed to be blessed. Of course I'm anointed. I just got to believe this. I get, but believing starts with knowing, okay? <laughs> and so when you know it, it's easy to believe it. <laughs> when you know something, it's easy to believe it. Man, and so I come to this place of knowing, this place of understanding. And out of that position, out of, that, out of my position in Christ and in the Father, that's when faith begins to work by itself, okay? That's when the word, when you receive the word, and you're just like, amen, of course it's true. Of course God's going to touch me. Of course God's healed me. Of course God's delivered me. Of course this is going to happen. There is no inner conflict. That's when your faith becomes powerful. That's when your faith becomes unstoppable. Amen? amen. Judy? Praise the Lord. God did not call you to a life of defeat. He called you to a life of victory. He called you to a life of overcoming. He called you to a life of power. He called you to a life of glory. He called you to a life of anointing. The reason why I know this is true is because Jesus told me. <laughs> it's because Jesus said it. For too long... We've been influenced by traditions of men, Mark 7, 13, that have brought the power of God's word down to the carnal level. No more. No more. Any, anything that brings God's word down, mm -mm, you come up. You're already seated in the heavenly places. 
you come up to the heavenly places where God is because that's where you are we don't have to hope that these promises are true we know they're true we know Jesus is true we know it's true I know he is the one he is the way he is the truth and he is the life he is the way to the father he is the 100% truth about the father and he and he is the life in the father life in Christ is life in God life in the father and that is who we are and that is who that is who you are right now this morning and I believe God's word is going to quicken inside of your inside of you inside of your being and the things that even even this morning things that you were you were trying to get you're trying to work your faith you're trying to believe for some things you're trying to get engage now you're like well oh, that's easy it is easy because of who you are and who Christ is and who God is in you so father god we love you we thank you lord jesus we thank you 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 for bringing back into bringing us a revelation of the father and bring us back into restoration with the father jesus we love you we thank you so much Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I just speak against any sickness or disease in this place. I cancel sickness. I cancel disease. I command healing to your bodies. I command healing to your minds in the name of Jesus. I speak against any infections in your body. If you, anybody has a, 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 an infection in their, in their gum, their teeth or something like that, be healed now in Jesus' name. If you have a, a crack or something with your filling or something like that, just be healed now in Jesus' name. I command healing in the name of Jesus. I command breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I command that now in the name of Jesus. We speak life, life, and abundant life in Jesus' name. I speak financial breakthrough. I speak healing breakthrough. I speak relationship breakthrough in Jesus' name. I declare divine revelation. I command healing to your bodies. If anybody has anything going on with their hip, it is your, whatever you got going on, be healed in Jesus' name. A word of knowledge is just like when something, the Lord reveals something really specific. So if I don't call out something for you, that doesn't mean you're not healed. You're already healed. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. If I see somebody has something going on, I believe it's your right hip, your lower back, be healed now in Jesus' name. Just take that right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your clarity, Jesus.